Hello and welcome to our complimentary webinar, which is brought to you today in partnership with Verint, AusContact's national gold sponsor, and it's entitled Using Real-Time Agent Assist to Create Contact Centre Super Agents. In the spirit of reconciliation, AusContact acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Today's webinar will run for approximately 60 minutes and during that time with the help of today's special guests, Daniel, Kate and AJ, we hope to have you swooning in delight with the conversation as well as provide some ideas to take back to your respective businesses. To round off the session, we'll be having a Q&A at the end of the webinar. I'm Fiona Keogh, CEO of OzContact and your moderator for today. While we're waiting for everyone to join us, let's use the time to quickly run through some housekeeping. Remember to interact with us to maximise the benefit. And as you know, there's no need to take too many notes because we'll be providing you with a recording of the webinar. To interact with us, please use the Q&A button on the control panel. You can ask questions or make comments for Daniel, Kate, AJ or myself from time to time. Don't forget we're having that Q&A at the end of the webinar, so type your questions as we go along so you don't forget to ask them. If you're having technical difficulties, please note that on the control panel, you can click the raise hand button and the Oz contact team will rush to your aid or you can revert to your confirmation email and all the relevant phone numbers and access codes will be available there for you. I know that most of you know how to ask a question, but let's just try out that Q&A button on the control panel now, just in case. And the question for you today is, not a trick question, but what is the name of the little girl that was found safe and well in Carnarvon yesterday? And it was such a wonderful, wonderful, warm feeling, not only for the whole of Australia, but you saw it went global. Jennifer knows, Nikki knows, Kalila knows, Robert knows, Cats know, like every, everybody knows. Um, isn't it fantastic, uh, Chloe Smith? So we know how to ask a question, guys, so don't be shy. And with that, it gives me great pleasure to welcome our speakers for today, Daniel Ziff, Vice President Speech and Text Analytics Global Product Strategy at Verant, Kate Sarucha, Director Customer Analytics and Experience APAC at Verant, and AJ, Solutions Consultant at Verant. And with that, I'm going to hand the mic off to Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you, Fiona. And it's such a pleasure to be here with everybody. Um, I used to spend so much time in Australia prior to the pandemic, and I kind of really miss being down under. I was just mentioning it to Fiona that, you know, I just can't wait to come back, hopefully soon. Meanwhile, um, you know, it's been a tough couple of years, uh, and it's especially been tough for uh, people in the contact center business, and most importantly, the agents themselves. Um, you know, the uh, big transition and, and lots, but it's also been tough for, for customers and the agents are the ones who need to not only handle their own challenges, but also support the customers calling in. So let's just look at the challenges and what it's like being a contact center agent. Um, first, a lot of organizations, especially these past few years, have been focused on understanding that when, when a customer already calls, that means they're probably having a complex issue. If it was simple, they'd probably use a chatbot or look up something online or use an app. If they're calling, it could very likely be an emotional situation, a stressful, complex issue. And agents, first and foremost, need to apply the right level of empathy and, and sense the sentiment that, they, that the customer is coming from and, and apply the right uh, sentiment back. That's a, a natural thing we do as humans, but it can be challenging when you're handling 50 calls a day, one after the other, and when you're, you're, your dog's barking or your baby's crying or you're just having a stressful day altogether. Um, so um, that's one issue. Then there's a lot of policy and compliance. Uh, we know that now there's, there's new regulations around uh, you know, handling complaints and logging complaints. And in addition, there's a lot of internal and external policies and you gotta make sure, agent has to make sure that they, they are complying with everything, otherwise, that may impact their job and obviously the company, exposing the company. 
Um, and cost and efficiency has still been a big issue, especially during spikes of volumes of calls. You can't just take your time, even though you're trying to be empathetic and you're trying to be, uh, you know, you have to be efficient. You have to, to think about the handle time and what's that doing to your SLAs. Um, so being efficient, call after call. Um, then there's been some fraud as well. And you have to be cautious about, you know, handling the customer, but also making sure that you're not providing information you're not supposed to or authenticating customer correctly. Um, we've also seen many companies thrive and really leverage the opportunity to provide additional services, upsell, cross-sell products um, through the phone, uh, especially when people weren't going out to branches or, or retail. Um, so there is identifying that opportunity and taking advantage of it. Um, that helps the customer and obviously helps the company to generate revenue rather than just drive costs. Um, and finally, there's a lot of knowledge. Many organizations are using knowledge, uh, but the agent may have multiple applications, multiple knowledge screens, um, and they could easily get lost and maybe provide the wrong information and make sure that, that you know, they are aware of, of what they need to look at and, and where to find it. So a lot on the agent's mind. But bottom, bottom line, you need to be a superhuman to do this job uh, right. And, uh, and you know, some, some people may born, be born superhuman, but most of us are just mortals and we need AI to help us uh, to be superhuman. And that's what we're hearing from analysts. Uh, there's a quote here from McKinsey who did a report about building the superhuman agent. Um, and really they're saying, similar to what we're saying is that, you know, because the simple interactions are being self-serve, what ends up at the hands of the agent is more complex and organizations need to strike the balance between self-service and human and, and really not give up on that human touch. We all need it um, and customers need it and, and we need to do it right. Um, and uh, a great prediction, uh, you know, bold prediction here by Keith Dawson from Ventana about that within two years, really, three out of five organizations are gonna rely on real-time analytics to guide and provide that guidance to agents to help them address these, these complex challenges and apply at that and, and, and reach higher CSAT and better outcomes. So with that, I think the best way to really dive in deeper is to do a quick demo um, and uh, just show you what it looks like when you use AI to help guide uh, an agent. Um, so let's go um, and with that, I'll ask Kate, and AJ to help us and, and you're actually gonna run a call. AJ is gonna be a customer, Kate's gonna be our agent and uh, they're just uh, gonna run through it and you'll see on the desktop what's happening. Look, especially on the right-hand side where we see um, the work assist window that's guiding Kate throughout her handling of the conversation. With that, I'll hand it over to you and um, take it away. Hi, welcome to Orbital. My name is AJ, how can I help you today? Hi, AJ. I'm hoping you can help. I'm in the process of moving house at the moment and just making a quick call around to my service providers to get my address updated if possible. Most definitely, I can help you with that. Um, Thank just you. give me a second. All right, that process should be pretty simple. Um, I'll have the thing processed. Thank you, AJ. I'm also wondering, um, do apologize, in the move, I seem to have misplaced my credit card. Um, and while I've put everything on hold, I thought it might be a good idea to have the card replaced if possible. Is that something you're able to help me with? Just get a replacement card out as soon as possible? Most definitely. Um, I am looking into that particular process right now. Um, what I could do is looks like uh, we do have the option of sending you the replacement card uh, uh, through overnight shipping. Um, I would go ahead and process that one out for you. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, uh, is there anything else that I can help you with today? Oh, I feel really bad. You've been really helpful, but I do want to see if you can help me um, with a complaint. I did go into the branch this morning to try and organize a replacement card um, and the branch staff were not at all helpful. Um, so I just wanted to see if there's something we can do there to sort of provide that feedback to them. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Uh, we do take complaints very seriously. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and record this in our system. Um, and if you give me a second, I'll give you a confirmation number. Uh, appropriate team members are going to be looking into this issue and rest assured they'll be uh, uh, following up on this and make sure that this doesn't happen again. 
Thanks, AJ. Can I ask, instead of waiting for that to be done, is it possible for you to um, send that to me in an email? Uh, absolutely. I can send out an email. Uh, you'd get a confirmation email from our system uh, with all those details. Um, I do understand you must be pretty busy with your move, so all the <laughs> best with that. Crazy. No problem. Thank you so much for your help. Wonderful. Thank you for your okay. call. Have a nice day. Bye. Thanks, AJ. Bye. So we've just seen um, real-time agent assist play out with a few different scenarios for this um, interaction. First of all, we've been presented with knowledge management um, articles based on um, talking about updating the address. Um, while AJ was actually looking for that information, it was taking him a little bit of time and there was a bit of silence time. So the system has detected this and prompted him to sort of touch base with the customer to let him know what he's doing, which is really useful to keep the agent on track. And of course, we've then gone back to knowledge management again to help AJ um, around the process of replacing customers' um, credit card. And this is really um, to help drive efficiencies in that interaction and keep the agent sort of focused on the dialogue instead of having to search for that knowledge article. Of course, he did a great job with that. So we've given him some positive sentiment to reinforce the, the you know, the, the positivity in the call. Um, and lastly, when we look at the complaints element, you can see here there's an option um, around opening a case. So what we can do is we can embed the URL here. And if you've got an online knowledge management solution, sorry, an online case management solution, um, we can, um, by the click of that button, open up that screen for the agent to log the complaint. So we've seen a few different scenarios. Um, so hopefully that gives you a really good feel for, for you know, how the solution works. So thanks. Uh, Kate uh, and, and AJ. Um, let's get back to the deck and, um, and look at, you know, what I want to show is that even simple triggers like what we saw can have a big, big impact. This is a company, uh, a mortgage, an innovative mortgage lender out of Europe, part of a very large international bank, ABN Ambro. Um, and they deployed this um, along with speech analytics, which helps them kind of configure and add more triggers. Um, and within four months, they had a big impact uh, during the pandemic, improving NPS by 22%, uh, improving first car resolution by, by uh, over 9%, and uh, reducing the whole time by over 4%. So these are pretty impressive results during a very stressful time. Um, so the difference is typically when we think about analytics, it's something that analyzes the call after the fact, and you can have a picture of what happened. Here, we're actually impacting what happens during the call and changing the call outcome. So um, it, it can have a, a huge impact, just like we see here. Now, Florius is not um, a singular case. Um, we looked at research. Um, we have, uh, let's pull up the Aberdeen research. Um, you can see that you know there's been a lot of tools out there, and you know customer engagement is is such a big um, area, and we really need a platform to address everything. And there's other ways to improve performance, um, but the real time has a big impact. If, if this is comparing the blue bars are organizations out of over 300 organizations that were reviewed here with Aberdeen uh, from their research, um, you know organizations that did use other tools, and the the green ones are ones who use other tools, but also used real time agent assist type capabilities to guide agents in real time. And you can see customer retention improved by over 10% versus only 3% without that. Customer satisfaction improved by over 10% versus less than 3% otherwise. Um, improving customer effort. You know, this if the interaction is more effective, that improves uh, the level of effort the customer has to, you know, reduces repeat calls and things like that. Um, let's look at the next slide, even more metrics. Agent productivity improved over 7%. You can see why, because the call is shorter uh, and more effective. Uh, and first contact resolution, we saw that at Florius, um, similar numbers, uh, over 6% improvement here across the board. And uh, cost per call, again, this easily handles, you know, just the silence trigger where we, we identify where there's a long hold and remind the agent to get back to the customer, uh, improvement of over 4% here. Uh, improving quality SLAs, improving agent utilization. And you can see in the last one here is improving the agent's ability to, to you know, spend time assisting, you know, the customer uh, or assisting the agent. Um, so we can trigger an alert, not just for the agent, but also directly to the supervisor. Um, and they can really spend more time, you know, assisting when they're needed rather than, um, you know, trying to, to create an escalation. So pretty impactful um, uh, results. Well, let's do a poll. And based on that sort of intro, let's see what you guys think. And we, we've listed some solutions around customer engagement, things like speech analytics, 
text analytics that typically analyze the unstructured human to human conversation. Um, desktop analytics that analyzes the agent's desktop and help automate um, tools for the agent. Real-time agent assist, which is what you just saw. Knowledge management um, that could be part of that or separate. Um, automated quality where we're, we're analyzing 100% of the interactions and scoring them automatically. Chatbots and IVA that really can help the agent but can also directly self-serve the customer. Gamification, which is coming up as, as something to help engage the employees and the agents and many others. So we'll let we'll pull up the poll and see what you think. What are you evaluating out of these solutions or others um, in the next 12 months? Yeah, Jess, if you could just launch that poll and let's challenge Daniel with what are you expecting to see the answers to be without giving the answers away? Yeah, um, yeah. 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 It's going to be interesting. What we'll do is after we see the results from this session, we'll share some results from North America. We did a poll. Well, well not we did. We uh, uh, we have research from Saddletree who did a poll uh, with uh, NACC, the, the National Association for Contact Centers in North America. And we'll see what their results are and we'll, we'll see how that compares. It'll be interesting. I'm not going to predict what I think uh, is going to come up. It, I think it'll be interesting. I think there's there's going to be other others going to be interesting because I'm sure there's a lot of other use cases, but these are what we're seeing um, prominent um, solutions that are being applied and have been applied during these past two years and even prior. But I think there's been a surge, especially uh, with trying to support the agent and making them superhuman and uh, by doing that, supporting the customers that have been also in stressful uh, times. Yeah, um, so we might close the poll. I know we, we did some research earlier this year. Uh, it be interesting to compare what you're seeing in the US uh, with our, our uh, benchmarking that was done. So Jess, if you could share the results and let's see where we land. Wow, interesting, very interesting. So speech analytics took the, took the lead here with uh, over 60, uh, two thirds basically, uh, 67%. I'm not surprised, I know you know, Australia is, uh, you know, uh, one of our best markets for speech analytics. We have so many amazing customers and use cases. Text analytics, not far behind there. Um, desktop analytics, I, again, we, we look at those three as what we call interaction insights, kind of just looking at all the data we can. And you'll see also within real time, we use um, desktop. Um, real time guidance, 53, over 50%. We'll see in a minute the results in North America. Interesting knowledge management, over 50% or just exactly 50%. Automation of quality, 40%, um, chatbots, IVA, 47%, and then gamification, 20%. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, let's see the results from North America. Okay, so again, this is research. We got uh, permission to use this. Uh, we just spoke with Paul um, Stockfield, who, who published this report, a recent report from September of this year, just last month. Um, and um, this is from, like I said, the NACC, um, a National Association for Contact Centers in North America, 168 organizations participated. So there's two charts here. One is what are they evaluating? So looking at solutions for, for purchase. Um, and you can see um, gamification actually came in first. Interesting. And I think that was, been, I don't know if you've heard about the big resignation and, and issues. People are really worried about the engagement of the employee, not just the customer, but employees, you know, just having worked overworked working two jobs sometimes um and uh and being challenged so i think that's why gamification came in first it typically doesn't uh rank up here and we saw in australia it was the last um but we do see that real-time agent assist and real-time speech analytics which are really two flavors of of the same type of solution are really a key here and that's if you add desktop analytics which is the third one which is also related uh, we use that as well as part of the real-time guidance um so big big uh, numbers in terms of evaluation. If you do, just combine, that's almost exact same number we had in our, in, uh, this, in our poll, which is just about 50%. And then um, in terms of uh, purchase uh, in North America, chatbots was a big, there was big spikes in volumes. And the first thing was how do we deflect calls, right? Um, and get people to self-serve. And that's why it came in first in terms of purchase. But if you can see already 9% funding real-time agent guidance uh, this year, um, so um, I think pretty big surge in that. Uh, we see that as a relatively new set of solutions, but you know the innovation in this area, being able to do this accurately in real time with all the context, I think is also fueling this to, to making it much more effective. So I think that was cool to just to see the results. Um, with that, I'd like to hand it back to Kate and AJ to kind of dive a little bit deeper to understand the solution, how it works, what's unique about it, what's new about it, um, and uh, 
and we'll we'll definitely catch up with some q a at the end so uh submit your chat questions and then we'll we'll cover them at the end so thank you thanks daniel so obviously when we're looking at making these significant investments in, in new technology that's going to help us to understand the customer's needs and meet those changing expectations and to assist and engage the agents we obviously need strong use cases that we can tie back to some of those business objectives matching some of the challenges that organizations have been facing over the last couple of years. So speaking with our customers around the world, um, people who are already using real time um, analytics and those who are, are looking to invest in these sort of solutions. These are some of the most common use cases and I guess objectives um, that we're finding um, come out from those, those conversations. So using um, triggers such as we saw in the demonstration around sentiment, we can either you know, give positive reinforcement to an agent, or if it's a negative sentiment, perhaps you know, indicate that they may need to change their approach to sort of get a, a I guess, a, a mutually beneficial outcome to an interaction. Um, being able to guide the agent on the next, next best action um, based on the questions the customer are asking to reduce the need for them to rely on process flows and to be able to more um, openly be able to predict what the next question or the next step in that process is likely to be. This is really important when we have um, interaction types which are usually quite complex but perhaps not so high in volume. So for example, like a deceased estate, um, you know, quite often we find within contact centres, the agent will give information around, well, we need you to complete this form. Customer sends the form in and then what? They've got to call again. So being able to predict the next best action and providing the agent with all of the information in real time helps to drive the efficiencies and also helps to reduce repeat calls around these um, sometimes very emotive sort of inquiry types. There is a huge focus on compliance and it's not going away. Our biggest challenge is that regulations are endlessly changing and there are more and more of them. So we're asking our customer, and we're asking agents, as Daniel said, to give it the correct information. They've got to navigate multiple solutions in many cases, but we want them to focus on the customer. If the customer can't self-serve and they need to call the contact center, we need to make that experience as seamless as possible. So, you know, throwing in regulatory and process compliance on top of that, it's a lot for agents to deal with. So being able to present them with reminders at key points in an interaction, whether it's for a disclosure statement to be read or consent to be gained, or terms and conditions even, helps organisations to mitigate the risk and takes a little bit of pressure off the agent around the number of things they need to be cognizant of as to having those conversations. We do a lot of that through the presentation of knowledge management articles as well, whether it's in the work assist app that we saw in the demonstration or within a contextual knowledge framework. So again, um, the Aberdeen research that we've just shown indicates that agents spend around 14% of an interaction with a customer actually searching for information. So if we're able to present that information to an agent, then we have quite a, a significant gain in efficiencies there. And of course, it's always important to alert our supervisors when something's going wrong. If there's the potential for a call to need to be escalated, or if there's a threat of um, to either the business or of self-harm from um, customers, with a greater focus on vulnerable customers um, in our contact centres right across the region. These aren't all of the use cases within um, the real-time agent assist solution sets. Um, but these are the most common sort of business objectives and, and key sort of drivers for the solutions that we're finding. So let's look at how we sort of are responding to these sort of requirements with a, with a holistic solution that combines multiple sort of applications within that solution set. Um, within the real-time work assist app, um, we need to analyze not only what is being said, but the context of how it is being said, as well as the sentiment of those interactions. So we apply both linguistic triggers and acoustic triggers. So the linguistic triggers, obviously what's being said, the acoustic triggers, measuring things like silence times, interruptions, um, to give some context. We also then overlay the application triggers. So we might not want to give the agent some guidance. The first time we hear a customer um, ask about an inquiry, 
we might want to wait until the agent also opens up a particular processing screen. So we can match the spoken word to the, the area of the solution that the agent is in to give us context to that situation. Um, we don't want the agent, the um, guidance to be uh, a distraction for the agent. It needs to help them sort of um, maintain focus on the dialogue and make that interaction flow fairly smooth. This is generally delivered within a unified cloud UI. Um, so bringing together those triggers into the unified agent experience um, into the work assist application, um, you know, helps to containerize and, and sort of focus that area um, for the agents. AJ is going to talk a little bit more around the contextual knowledge and how our triggers can help to update the knowledge for the agent on the fly. Um, and we can also do this not just based on voice interactions, but also offering this through um, employee virtual assistant, which is connected to, through our IVA. And AJ will talk to us about that in a little more detail. So again, just to sort of you know, talk about how we, we create these robust scenarios, we use a combination of those linguistic triggers. Um, and for those of you who use speech analytics um, and perhaps already are using variant speech analytics, we can leverage your existing categories to identify what are the key terms and phrases that either your customers or your agents are going to be using to, I guess, trigger an action for the agent. Um, and again, we can give some guidance to the agent around the sentiment and the flow of the call through those acoustic triggers. AJ, I'll get you to walk through some of the knowledge management experience elements. That's OK. Perfect. Thank you, Kate. Um, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time talking about knowledge management. And uh, already 50% uh, of the survey poll said that you're looking at knowledge management. Um, what is interesting is most organization already has some form of knowledge. Uh, it could be like intranet uh, sites, SharePoints, or a proper knowledge system. Uh, obviously, some better than the others. But the foundation of knowledge uh, system, a good knowledge system, is to provide that consistency of response, no matter who asks that particular question or uh, which channel uh, the inquiry comes from. Um, and if you have a good knowledge system, you should definitely be considering integrating that with the RTAA solution. Um, for those of you who know, Verint also offers uh, a knowledge system, uh, which has won several awards on its effectiveness and the ease of use. So um, coming back to the point that Kate mentioned about uh, the research, Aberdeen research way, like 14% uh, uh, of the time uh, a service team member is spending in terms of looking for information. When we start to plug these uh, two together, RTAA with like knowledge management, what we're doing is we are eliminating the need for the search. Uh, we are providing knowledge at what we call as the speed of conversation. And this is going to have a massive impact uh, on things like the silence time, hold time, as well as the overall handling time. Um, the second thing is uh, we are living in a world right now where information is constantly changing and having recommended knowledge to employees ensures that uh, uh, it gives a high level of confidence that they are looking at the data and the greatest. Um, and also when we roll out knowledge systems, we find that uh, seasoned employees often tend to uh, rely on tacit knowledge and uh, invariably they may share some outdated information, but having these proactive recommendations come through uh, eliminates that overall problem. Um, the third point in there is about uh, knowledge. It's not just like single dimension. It's not just an article. Uh, there are elements where uh, a good knowledge system would provide what we call as process guidance. So this is about breaking down a complex process into logical steps and making it easy for people to consume. Um, in a utilities environment, if you think about it, uh, if I'm a customer who wants to move my house, um, it's a complex process that the employee needs to go through. They need to go through the disconnection of my current request, uh, then do a reconnection and based on my new address, there's going to be like different service providers or distributors that they need to interact with. And it's a very complex process. Uh, eliminating that particular complexity by walking them step by step makes it very simple. Um, I like to call it as like, uh, just like uh, using Google Maps, uh, following directions to get to a destination without worrying about which route to take and how I go about doing it. Um, which brings us to the next point in terms of when we talk about um, uh, rolling out um, um, intelligent virtual assistants. Um, this is again one of those uh, areas where um, uh, it really adds value from an automation standpoint. Uh, when uh, Kate was uh, earlier talking about providing guidance uh, uh, based on the conversational aspect, 
uh, in a hybrid working environment, what we are uh, living is we don't have, not everyone has the opportunity to raise their hand up and ask a question to a supervisor or a colleague. Um, often when we get a uh, uh, contextual guidance come through, there may be additional follow-on questions that the employee may ask. So by bringing in the IV or the virtual assistant, we are opening this up to a two-way conversation and providing, addressing that particular gap between proactive guidance and reactive support, which goes a long way in terms of helping employees uh, focused on the task at hand. Um, the second element in that is more around automation. Obviously, um, a good conversational AI or IBA helps in terms of automating transactional uh, tasks. Uh, this could be things around canceling a card uh, or changing address, uh, which may require integration with like multiple backend systems to fulfill that. IV can take the load of the employee and do it for them, fulfill for them. Um, especially if you already have an uh, IVA on your digital side to support customers with the same process, they're just like reusing all those integration touch points and making it easy for your employees. Um, the third element over there is personalization. This is again an area where IVA shines. Um, it looks at um, uh, who the customer is and start to make like personalized recommendations. So if the customer asks a question about uh, what is my balance, uh, it is able to pull up uh, their most recent balance and give that information immediately. This could also be like uh, for like proactive things, um, proactively notifying the employee that their uh, customer's uh, annual premium, uh, annual policy is uh, coming up for renewal. And probably that's a good time to start having the conversation one month in advance, uh, or even like letting them know that they are in an outdated plan um, and uh, recommend or help the employee choose the right plan based on the customer needs. Uh, now, talking about a few considerations over here, um, context is again an important area. We need to use it wisely. Uh, we are able to supplement a lot of the customer related information with the nature of the inquiry when we are dealing with an um, IBA. So what I mean by this is the customer is already talking about um, things like um, uh, uh, changing their uh, uh, payment details on file and they have like uh, multiple different policies uh, on record. We need to clarify which policy that is, but if the customer is already uh, in the context of dealing with a single policy uh, of a particular policy, it means uh, the, it's a high likelihood that they're referring to that particular policy, um, which also brings on to the next element, which we like to call a goal-based dialogue. So this uh, goal-based dialogue makes the overall process very dynamic and intuitive. Um, in a travel scenario, if I go and say um, uh, the customer wants to fly from uh, Sydney to Brisbane tomorrow and return on uh, Sunday uh, late afternoon. So IBA can process that whole information and give recommendations based on uh, uh, all the flights that meet the criteria. Um, on the flip side, where this becomes dynamic is um, if the customer or the agent just says like uh, they want to go to uh, Brisbane tomorrow. Um, then the IBA can chime in and ask uh, just the missing pieces of information, like where are you departing from and is it a one way or a round trip? Um, you're not redefining the process. It is uh, the nature of the IBA to be adaptive, making it simple to use and effective in a customer service environment. Um, last but not the least, uh, the feedback and monitoring, which is another important area. Uh, be it like knowledge management or uh, IBA or the overall uh, uh, agent assist. Uh, we need to be like constantly looking at how do we improve things. So this comes back to, uh, in an IBA context, comes back to do we have the right uh, language models, uh, whether the IBA is making the right recommendation, how do we capture the feedback from the employee back so that it feeds into the overall ecosystem. And also, uh, if you have things like speech analytics, going back and validating whether um, uh, you're seeing a decline in terms of uh, the handling time, silence time, and the hold times to uh, map back into uh, what uh, goals you're trying to drive. So all these things combine, um, things like uh, plugging in uh, KM, IV into this unified uh, interface provides uh, one-stop shop for your employees to receive all the guidance that they need to do their job. Great, thank you, thank you. So AJ's just sort of talked a little bit about the feedback and monitoring, which leads very nicely into how do we actually track and measure um, the use of these solutions? Um, agents, uh, you know, will do their best to um, derive the best outcome for both the organisation and for the customer. But it's important that we can actually give them some guidance on how they're tracking against that. So we also leverage Verence Performance Management Scorecards to enable both supervisors as well as analysts 
who can measure and manage performance um, across these different um, triggers or rules um, around the um, agent assist. So real-time KPIs are, are displayed within the scorecards and they allow an analyst to track and progress at an individual, a team or a business level um, and trend performance over time. So obviously we want to see a, a decline in negative sentiment and, and crosstalk and long silences that you see here. But we also want to see um, an increase in um, you know, positive sentiment, for example. Supervisors can also use these to um, really target specific coaching needs for employees who are not meeting particular goals that have been defined against those KPIs and to manage performance plans all from the, from the one location. So the tools are there not only to give the agent guidance, but also to track how they're using that guidance. Just want to finish up with um, another use case for you um, around how some of our customers are using these solutions to derive benefits um, for the organisation. This is a, a global bank that we work for, work with in the APAC region, um, and they've been a user of speech analytics for some time. They also have applied um, real-time speech analytics and the variant desktop process analytics solution, which includes our application triggers. What they were trying to do is to identify, um, first of all, they use speech analytics to identify who their top and bottom performers are in, um, in their sales teams. So what are sort of the products that they're positioning to customers um, and which of those are more successful? How do they overcome the objectives? And what's different in the way they close their sales between these two groups of performers? What that then allowed them to do was to use real-time guidance to create almost some scripts. So using the, the linguistic triggers and matching them with desktop application triggers, we were able to present offers to the agent that match the customer's profile or complement the solution sets that they already have. So what these top performing agents were doing differently was more often than not, um, they were positioning high value products to the customers that actually met their profile, as opposed to our lower performing agents who were kind of focusing on the, the, the I guess the products or offers that are most recent, so at the most front of mind. These agents also generally around how we overcome objections was that they usually offered more than one option to the customer. And then they're able to more easily close that call. Instead of saying, so we're going to go ahead with this account today, they were more likely to get a positive outcome if they could say, so are we going to sign up for product A or product B today? So we're able to give that guidance to agents in real time um, and sort of bring everyone up to the same level of capability around the, the sales pitch that they were delivering. Within about three or four months, um, we found that the, the actual pitch rate, so the, the amount of times an agent was offering an upsell or cross-sell to a new product, um, increased from 10 to 20%, so actually double. The annual sales revenue increased by 20%, um, and uh, sorry, 25%, and their expected ROI payback was in about six months. If we just have a look, going back, as AJ said, using tools like speech analytics to understand have the rules that we've created um, actually made an impact? So for this organization, we could see very quickly, over, almost overnight, the actual offers of solutions, so the pitch that was being made, um, increased immediately. So again, increasing the, the sales offer, but also increasing the sales revenue um, over a six month period. So for a global bank, you can imagine that that, um, that level of, of increase in revenue is quite significant. So we're going to leave you with those thoughts. Um, we've, we've talked about some of the use cases and the solution itself, um, and we'd like to open up for some Q&A, if that's okay. Thanks, Kate. And we do have a lot of questions coming in. There are already nine in the queue. So why don't we throw to Daniel first? Yes, you're on the spot immediately. Um, with a question about the poll that we ran uh, compared with the US results. Uh, and Alison would like to know, uh, is the difference between Australia and the US market, is, is it because the US has already deployed speech or text analytics and they're moving forward on other ways to improve engagement? Um, yeah, for, first of all, many of the polls showed really increase in use of speech and text analytics quite, quite prevalent in the US already. I think real time is the next frontier. Uh, we have a lot of existing customers that expand from 
near real time speech analytics that tracks things once an hour and you can do things immediately after the call, but it's not doing it during the call and they want to impact the results during the call. And I think the pandemic having an impact of this situation where agents don't have a network of support, they don't have a peer, they don't have a supervisor right next to them. The need for real-time support and guidance has become more acute. Um, whereas the, the speech Alex was still early on in the pandemic, we saw a, a surge in speech requirement because people needed to know what's going on. But once we figure out what's going on and we know we have a problem, we need to start fixing the problem. And that's where real time helps more than analyzing things after the fact. Um, but definitely um, we've seen, uh, you know, the U.S., you know, it's almost standard today. Every every contact center either has some form of speech analytics or, or is looking. Uh, so I think where we see, you know, real time being more innovative and, and uh, sort of in an earlier stage of, of adoption. Thanks, Daniel. Lawrence has got a question, uh, and I don't know who's going to answer this one, but I know all three of you can. Um, so he wants to know, does this solution support voice only or text-based chat messaging as well? Yeah, so general, there's different ways to do the chat support. It supports both. It's a solution that can support both voice and text. Specifically, what you saw real-time agent guidance or real-time agent assist is focused on voice, but um, it can do some analysis of the text through DPA. We also use the IVA as a, as a solution for the chat. So, so the chat can help, the, the agent can basically ask questions to the chat bot um, and internal, we have customers using that, uh, even in Australia, that use the internal IVA to support. But we also have some solutions that we brought it in, uh, we are bringing in uh, and, and evaluating that kind of suggest for chat agents, they can suggest what to say. So you have kind of three offers and you just click on them. So it's basically typing the answers, but still giving control to the agent. So it's not a chat bot. It's the agent is in control, but the AI is sort of helping, you know, suggest uh, suggest uh, answers and, and even write them for the agent. And you just click one button. And so it, it, you basically, a single agent can do double the, the workload with, uh, with this type of support. And remember to apply empathy where it's needed. And I understand your frustration, things like that, that kind of guides the agent. Um, so so um, that's another uh, capability we can bring in. Um, uh, but, I, but, but it's a good question because I think this is needed not just for voice. Voice is maybe the most challenging because the di most difficult calls, the most emotional, um, so, so, and still the most expensive um, channel usually. Uh, but chat is definitely, we see a surge for, for shifting from voice to digital channels, messaging, very just acquired conversational, which is, you know, specializes in that kind of interactions, social messaging, uh, you know, WeChat and, and uh WhatsApp and all those are becoming very important for support as well. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. And I think you're right. Um, voice is still um, the most popular in terms of emotional connection, in terms of the need for emotional intelligence, that human touch. Uh, there's still a little bit of a perspective that um, I'm going to say fingers on a keyboard is not quite as human as uh, voice to voice uh, connection. Um, William's got a couple of questions. Cheeky, I know, having a couple of questions. He'd like to know, do you tailor your agent support based on tenure? So question. it's an interesting question. I, I know, Kate, you might want to add, take that one. Um, it, it can be done. You can configure which agents get what kind of guidance and what kind of support. Um, but I, I think it makes a lot of sense where Florius, for example, use this to, in, to enable new agents. As they hire new agents, they provide more guidance, which over time diminish. They don't need that any. They get it. They, and that's a good best practice. Don't overload the agent. Don't give them stuff they already know. Um, but I don't know, Kate, did you have any examples or, or, or input on that? Yeah, it's certainly something we can do. And Daniel's right. We have seen a couple of use cases where, um, where organizations will have some call them some of them call them the nursery or you know basically where your new starters um, have their introduction skills so we can actually you know one of the great use cases is, is tailor some of those um, that guidance those actions to agents who are you know just coming out of you know their onboard training it actually helps to reduce the amount of time they have to spend in the classroom and it's less reliance on having a buddy doing side by side listening. Um, while the concept doesn't go away, everyone still uses buddies. We know that it has an impact on um, on performance across the contact centre. 
you know, as you finish a call, your buddy sits and explains what you've done. They've got themselves in a not ready state and calls start to pile up. So being able to create use cases around those entry level skills to help onboarding um, becomes really important. And it's a really good use case. Uh, and I, I guess another, another way to think about that too is that if you have people that are not performing at the level that you would like to see them performing, that you could turn um, that additional support back on for those agents to guide them through rather than taking them uh, back into the buddy situation or double jacking or whatever you decide or back into the classroom. Yep. Uh, another great way to use the tool. Um, here's William's second question. Um, have you found that the skills and agent needs are different to effectively use these tools as such would change the hiring profile? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that is a great question. Yeah. It's almost like he's read that uh, earlier this year, we acquired a company that um, does the, that helps you hire the right people. And this has become also mission critical, one, because there's a shortage of people that are available and we need more people, but also the profile has changed. You know, people that can handle the right level of stress and can apply the right level of sentiment and emotion and, and can handle that superhuman type of interaction. Like I said, being a contact center agent is, is not what it used to be. <laughs> um, and, um, and I think we use tool in the hiring process and that tool is also infused with AI and with types of speech analytics it was called Hire IQ, the company, but but uh, really it's it's our intelligent hiring uh, solution. Um, so I think th this does go hand in hand in, in really identifying the right profile. And you can track over time, what was the profile that we used to hire and who has become more successful as an agent and who really interacts with the tool, with the real-time guidance tool. We also have feedback. The agents can provide feedback of effective, not effective, which can help use tr train the AI and we don't want again. We don't want to disturb the agent. We don't want to interrupt the agent. So if if the agent feels this is intrusive, that, that we can reduce that level of, of guidance. Um, uh, but I do think it's all linked. You know, it's 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 starting with getting the right people in the right job, but then also providing the right guidance over time that can again start with more guidance and over time less guidance. And also as new things evolve, speech analytics is great to identify a new emerging trend something, a new problem, you know, and we saw this so much, you know, when COVID popped up and then there was masks and then there was vaccines and then there was anti-vaccines. I mean, all these issues pop up and you need to address that as they evolve so you can add these new triggers as we see them and then agents figure it out and then we can reduce that. So I think it's all connected. It's all the journey of the employer and engaging the employee from the hiring to ongoing. But I do think that that profile of who is the right contact center definitely has changed in the last two years and definitely in the last two decades, but even more so in the last two years. I completely agree. I, I think as well as, as, as sort of looking at the skill sets of individuals who can use these sort of tools, I think with the rise of digital transformation and AI embedded solutions, I think we've naturally seen a change to the skill set that's needed within the contact center, where those low, I guess, low complexity transactions are dealt with through self-service channels. The interactions that come through to the contact center tend to require a higher level of emotional intelligence and a higher ability to solve problems, complex problems. Um, so I think the profile of the agent is changing regardless of the solutions or the non-digital solutions that we have. Um, and I think the, these tools make that process or that transition a lot easier. Thanks, Kate. I, and, I, and you touched on a point earlier, which is about um, during the training period or the onboarding period, the speed to competence yep. uh, and we know that we retain people uh, a lot more readily if people feel like they're contributing to the organization and to their role rather than spending you know the traditional dare I say it um, 12 weeks in the classroom uh, with cognitive overload and all of those sorts of things that doesn't create create a high level of engagement yep. um, fantastic we have an anonymous attendee who would like to know, do you find that an integrated knowledge management actually takes away from individual agent knowledge and confidence? And maybe that's an AJ special, I think. Yeah. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, I think um, part of this also ties to the conversation that we were having sometime earlier about tailoring the response based on their tenure. Um, I think this fits in nicely. Um, in addition to 
having the ability to tailor the response at the uh, notification that they receive. Even a good knowledge platform like Verint has the ability to have uh, role-based information. So um, um, based on someone who's been with an organization for a long time, you may want to give them quick pointers and probably certain alerts in terms of change, what has changed. Um, if you are taking that approach, um, this definitely complements uh, the agent confidence rather than taking it away because what they are getting is like quick in insights, which helps them solve the problem uh, in the right way rather than uh, fully uh, relying on a full complete uh, remembering a process and trying to walk them into it. So we often find that when we have like knowledge and probably have some of these speech enabled knowledge systems in place, it actually gives employees much higher confidence to focus on the conversation rather than battling like internal information within the system. Thanks, AJ. So the next four questions that I can see that have, have come up uh, are more like buying questions, so, but more uh, technical in, in their aspect, shall we say. So, and they're from an anonymous buyer, so there you go. Um, do we need speech analytics in place to enable real-time agent assist? Sure. So um, we don't need it. Um, we can, you can just buy real-time agent assist and real-time agent assist comes with out of the box triggers, the silence trigger, the crosstalk trigger, the sentiment, positive and negative complaints, escalation. So you can just start with that, which is really our best practice guidance is don't try to do everything at boil the ocean, you know, and you, you're going to, if you overload agents with too much guidance, they're going to shut it off or they're going to complain. You start with a few things and you see that they have an impact um, and you can monitor that impact. Um, but if you want to, you know, the midterm and long-term strategies to add, you know, as new issues arise, you, you launched a new product, your competitor launched something, there's a new regulation. It's something that goes beyond what may come out of the box and you want to create your own custom triggers. And to do that, the most effective way and the easiest, fastest way is to do it with speech analytics. You build a category, you test it out, you see how often this, this, this top of topic is being discussed, how agents handle it, how best agents, you know, and, 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 and not so great agents are doing and figure out where and why you want to apply it. And then just, we have even a, you know, with one button, you basically apply it as a real-time trigger. So it's very easy to build it, to test it with speech analytics and then apply it as real time. Um, so for that, you would basically require speech analytics. Otherwise you, you know, Varen can build those for you with professional services, but it's much more effective that you can drive it yourself and speech is a really, really recommended add-on, but it doesn't have to be immediately, um, you know, to come together. You can start with real-time agent assist uh, as is. Speech Thank analytics you. is also a really good tool to be able to measure the impact of your use cases. So one of the things we like to start with is if we're building a use case around um, something like we saw earlier around changing an address, what is the average duration of that call now? What, what percentage of the time is generally spent either on hold or a silence time? Um, and how often are they repeat calls? So we can then track as these um, triggers are in action, are we seeing efficiencies within those existing speech analytics categories? Thanks, Kate. Thanks, and thanks, Daniel. Um, another somewhat technical buying question. Um, will real-time agent assist integrate with my internal systems? AJ, do you want to? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, one? not a problem, um, definitely. So a uh, part of the overall um, ecosystem that we are proposing is uh, to talk to your internal system. So um, it would have ability to launch applications and also handle processes. Um, obviously, when you have things like uh, IVA, that's going to make that particular transactional seamless intervent. Um, so yeah, uh, that is the whole purpose of um, talking about providing the end-to-end -end guidance in a unified interface. Fantastic. Well, this person seems really keen anonymous person I might add. So what's the best place to start if we want to roll out real-time agent assist? So as I mentioned, I think the best way is to start with the out-of-the-box triggers. And we've seen sometimes a very like silence trigger is, is something that has immediate impact. Just reminding the agent to get back to the customer reduces that whole time, reduces the handle time, improves the outcome. So we've seen that that has immediate impact with quantifiable ROI, and it usually doesn't annoy the agent because they, they realize that, you know, it's just kind of gets them back into place. We've all been on that call where the agent says, hold on a minute, and, and we're not even sure they're still there. They might have gone to the bathroom. Who knows? Um, so, so those are simple things um, that you start with. Don't start with something too complex and don't start with too many triggers. 
start with five, max 10 to see that, you know, agents are embracing this, that this is at the right, uh, that this is helpful, that this is having an impact. And then over time, you know, take away the ones that you see are maybe not effective, add new ones that are more customized, adjust it based on which agents or how often uh, do you want it once in a call or do you want it to pop up multiple times? You got to figure it out. It depends on your environment. Um, but that's what I would recommend. Uh, if you don't have anywhere to start, start with what aid Varen provides out of the box. It's already there. Um, and then, uh, you know, definitely you'd want over time to build your own. Uh, uh, but, but that would be my guidance. Thanks, Daniel. And one more from an anonymous attendee, if I may. Um, it's about variant knowledge management. Do we need to use it? Um, without the full context of the question, uh, and there I'm assuming like um, is knowledge management a prerequisite for this? Um, yeah. Obviously, um, it's not necessarily a prerequisite, uh, but having it in place is going to provide a full uh, guidance support. Uh, acting as a safety net for your employees. So it's definitely recommended. Um, obviously, um, we would uh, like you to use our knowledge management system if possible, but at the same time, what we advocate is from a platform standpoint, we are very open. We have like APIs. If you have a good knowledge system, we'd be able to plug onto that. Um, the only thing is uh, from Verin standpoint, we are bringing all these solutions together. So that's going to add an uh, overall value in terms of uh, how these products evolve in the long time. And also uh, Verint would be best place to guide you on how to go about uh, going through this whole, uh, whole journey on uh, getting the right outcomes for you when you're looking at this as a combined solution. Thanks, AJ. Well, I can't believe it, but we're nearly at time. So um, who would like to do some closing remarks before we go? We might leave that with you, Daniel. Okay. Um, so first of all, thank you for the opportunity. It's great to connect even virtually. Um, um, and I do think, um, you know, there is a, the light at the end of the tunnel. I think there's been, a, this has been amazing uh, two years, both very challenging, but also has accelerated, you know, the cloud. We see shift to the cloud where people, we can add these capabilities in the cloud quickly. Uh, we can be much more nimble with cloud. Um, looking at a platform that allows you kind of to both integrate into your environment, but add capabilities quickly. Um, realizing that the customer is super important, but the agent is no less important. And I would expand that to the employee. We need to focus on our employees. We need to help our employees. We understand that this is a challenging time. In the U.S., we've seen what they're touting is the, the great resignation where people are just either fed up or looking for a new opportunity or wanting to change their whole lifestyle. Um, but employees are really are the, are the heart and the soul of the organization and, and um, investing in them and providing them with tool. And, and really the hybrid AI does not have to replace employees. It could augment and help us. That's really where it's at. There is cases where we're helping the customer directly. In other cases, we're helping the employee. This is what this is all about. Um, we're very, very excited about the opportunities and what's ahead and, and, um, I hope you are as well and wishing you a fantastic end of this uh, 21. We're almost in 22. Thanks, Daniel. And thanks, AJ, Kate and Daniel for sharing um, such compelling data, use case data, as well as the information from Aberdeen, as well as your knowledge uh, and, and, take, and answering all those questions so transparently. Um, a huge thank you to everybody that joined us today for uh, giving up your time. Uh, and I would love to say to you, thank you to Verint National Gold Sponsor and wherever you might be, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you next time.